Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to the Trace Cakey's channel. I'm Chantelle, and in this video, we're going to talk about some tips and tricks to prevent itchy skin. Now that the weather is changing, this is particularly important. As you know, dry, itchy winter skin is characterized by the skin that has difficult time retaining moisture. As it turns out, this is not as simple as it sounds. A lot of times we think of moisture as water, but that's not the only component when we're considering the hydration status of our skin barrier. I want to help you relate to your skin barrier better, and I want you to know that it's more than a one-note Nancy. In order to better understand your skin barrier's many components, first, I want you to start by visualizing a nice, tender, moist steak. Medium rare, cooked to perfection. And for my veggie friends out there, imagine a perfectly roasted eggplant but the steak makes more sense in this analogy. A nice moist steak is not a watery steak. No, it's moist with juices and fats dripping out with each slice of the knife. And these juices are made up of a lot of components, just like the moisture barrier in our skin. Yes, there is water, but there are also fats and proteins and yummy steak juice. While our skin is far from a piece of meat, the analogy holds strong with our skin barrier and our outer skin cells. Our skin cells and our skin barrier are made up of several components. There are lipids, otherwise known as fats and ceramides. Next, there are proteins, and there's even carbohydrates, which are not only found inside the skin cells, but also the connective layers holding the skin cells together. That brings us to our first tip to keep those cells and the connective tissue in our barrier strong. Avoid hot showers and baths. I know this is super tempting as the weather begins to turn colder. I too want to spend a few extra minutes filling the bathroom with comforting steam and warming up under hot blazing water. But don't do it! You might already know about that hot water deal, but do you know why? Maybe if you can visualize what's happening to your skin barrier under hot water, then you won't be so tempted next time to want to warm up in a hot shower. As I explained earlier, the skin barrier is composed of outer skin cells, which are being held together by proteins. 50% of these proteins are made from fats, and this is important because the most of the protein fats are barely solid at room temperature. This soft fat complex allows our skin to be stretchy and pliable. This means that the proteins that hold our skin cells together at the barrier are mostly soft fats. Everybody's fat proteins in the skin surface are susceptible to heat damage, but people with eczema have fat proteins that are even more sensitive to heat. Under heated conditions, which is typically 95 degrees Fahrenheit, the proteins begin to denature or melt. Think about what happens when you add butter to a warm pan. And the normally solid fatty butter that sits on your countertop just melts right above room temperature in the warming pan. This added heat is great strategy for cooking, but not so much for our skin. In heat or hot showers, the fat holding your skin barrier together is compromised the same way that butter is. When butter changes shape in a hot pan, it gets melty and slides around. In the skin, our fats and the proteins change shape under heat as well. And while they do not melt and slip away, they do become thinner. And when this happens, the barrier allows moisture to escape from under the skin without you even noticing. Whether you choose warm showers or short hot showers, applying a moisturizer after showering is a must. This stops the hot water moisture loss from the shower right in its tracks. Literally, it forms a thin coat of oils that keeps the water in. Also, the correct moisturizer can replace the damaged fats in the skin barrier as well. Guess what else? Cold water isn't helpful either. I doubt most of you are spending many days participating in polar bear plunges, which would obviously be hard on anyone's skin. And no, I'm not talking about cold showers either. This tip is about washing your hands in cold water. Yeah, I'm still talking about those fatty proteins holding the barrier cells together. In the case of cold water, they get hard and contort, kind of like we do when a breeze of cold air catches us off guard. When our skin barrier's soft fatty proteins contract in the cold water, they again allow moisture to escape unnoticed. This also happens with cold weather. When our skin barrier's soft fatty proteins contract in the cold water, they again allow moisture to escape unnoticed. This also applies to weather. Wearing gloves when the temperature drops will go a long way to protect your skin. And they're cozy too. I know, our skin barrier is a high maintenance Goldilocks. Not too hot, not too cold, just the right kind of warm. However, no matter the water temperature, you should always moisturize after washing your hands. This simple step can be the difference between chapped, painful hands by the new year or soft, comfortable skin all the way through winter. Here is why moisturizing the hands after washing is important to prevent chapped, itchy hands. First of all, yes, soaps are great for hygiene and we obviously need to wash our hands for better overall health, but soaps work by attacking those fatty proteins. Soaps contain molecules called surfactants. This is how they work. Surfactants are molecular groups that resemble a two-headed snake. 
On either end, they contain a chemical group that sinks their fangs into their prey. One end bites into grease, dirt, or fatty skin barrier proteins and clings on for dear life, while the other uses its fangs to hitch a ride with a water molecule and wash right off your skin, dragging the dirt, germs, and fats from the other end right along with it. Clean hands. But now, your hands are missing some of those surface fats we need to keep our skin from cracking. Help them out and give them a quick replenish with a lightweight lotion after each hand wash. Or use a moisturizing hand wash. Not as good as putting on moisturizer after, but better than nothing. Moving on from the hands and right into exercising. We all know the benefits of exercise. However, for people with dry winter skin or eczema sufferers, sweating triggers irritating itching. And here's some proven tips to make it easier. Tip number one. Hydrate before exercise. Hydrating will help you dilute your sweat. The urea and sodium excreted in your sweat can be very irritating to your skin. If you dilute their concentration before they arrive at the surface, the less irritating these natural molecules will be. Tip two, choose the right clothing. Look for light, breathable fabrics that don't hug or rub the skin, especially after they've absorbed your perspiration. A common problem is tight-fitting clothing, soaking up concentrated minerals and holding them right onto your skin barrier. The less time these molecules spend on the surface of your skin, the better. Also, loose clothes is less friction, and the less friction you have on your skin will mean less irritation. Tip number three, don't forget to clean off the sweat as soon as possible. After a workout in the gym, if you can't shower, at least bring a wet towel and wipe off your elbows, your knees, and your face. Any other problem areas, even if you'll be home in 20 to 30 minutes, that time matters for your skin because the sodium is instantly dehydrating in your skin barrier. Lastly, Moisturize before and after a workout. In this case, use a light moisturizer that has a chance to fully absorb before the workout. This will give your skin's lipids and fats a power boost before all that friction from your clothes and irritating sweat molecules arrive. Okay, my friends, I hope you stay warm and moisturized this winter. Nobody likes being itchy, so be kind to your skin barrier. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and easily forward this video to someone you know who could use a tip or two. Take care, bye for now. Uh -huh.